So in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, top down processing versus bottom up processing for receptive skills. That means listening and reading. So when we're listening and reading, there are two ways that we process the information that's coming in. And this video is all about that. Right. So let's get started. Uh, listening and reading is the fluent process of combining information from the text and background knowledge to build meaning. OK, so when we are comprehending from uh, receptive skills, listening and reading, there are these two processes happening. OK, um, the two sets of information, we could also say. Uh, so there's information in the text now. When we're talking about teaching, listening and reading, text can mean reading reading text or it can mean any kind of listening material like audio or video or so on. OK, so you've got information in the text, but then you've also got information here. OK, in the learners or the listeners or the readers mind, there's also background information that we know. So we use both sets of information to reach comprehension. So, uh, looking more at these two sets of information, if we are processing starting from here, this is called top down. OK, if we start the processing more focused on the information in the text, that's called bottom up. OK, so top down processing is processing and comprehension that starts with background knowledge based on the context of communication. That's top down processing. Bottom up processing is processing and comprehension is possible by decoding the smallest parts of the language. For example, sounds, chunks of words, syllables, letters and so on. OK, so these two sets of information work together to reach comprehension. Sometimes we're using more this information, sometimes we're using more the piece by piece, the small parts of information from the text, such as sounds or letters and so on. OK, so this is very closely related to this idea of background knowledge. And you may have heard of schema in, in teaching. We often talk about activate schema, which basically means activate background knowledge. Uh, this comes from uh, schema theory, which I believe is uh, kind of related to field of psychology. And according to this idea, our brain is a store of information. And this information is kept in different parts of our brain. And our brain makes connections between um, these, these sets of information. OK, um, so you can see on the, the slide here, you've got the, the text or the audio coming in. And then the listener or the reader is kind of connecting that with the parts of the brain, the right parts of the brain. Um, so schema, um, schema theory uh, is um, if we look at the, the store of information, that's called schemata. OK, so you can see this kind of mind map with the brain in the middle and all these kind of connections coming off the brain. OK, so that is the schemata of your brain. And I always make this comparison with the computer because we're most of us are familiar with using a computer. And when you use a computer, different information is stored in different folders. Right. So if you're trying to find something, you have to go to the correct folder. That's kind of what it's like when we are comprehending language input. We have to connect um, with the, the right parts of information in our brain in order to comprehend. OK, so when you're listening and when you're reading, you're accessing the folders in your mind. OK, um, I can give you a quick example of this as well that I often give in the classroom. Uh, I'm going to say a word and I want you to think about the the first thing that comes to mind when I say this word. OK, so I'm going to say a word and just think of the first kind of two or three things that come to mind. OK, OK, the word is melon. OK, melon. OK, so melon is a fruit. And often the replies that I get about melon, uh, I, ha I often have words like yellow, juicy, tropical, um, yummy and so on. OK, 
So that means that when you hear the word melon, the schemata that you have is connected with those things. Fruit, tropical, juicy, those kind of words come to mind, okay? So that is, that's an example of these kind of connections. And um, so as a teacher, it's really important to help learners to build those connections. You need to activate schema and work on background knowledge. But also, you know, when you're teaching new vocabulary, for example, um, help learners to connect that vocabulary with the right kind of words and context that we um, store related to that word. Okay. So that's uh, schema theory. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so um, we're going to talk more about uh, reading and listening processes, the top-down processing and bottom-up processing. Um, I'm going to give you, show you a few examples. This uh, this example is often brought up in terms of this kind of processing. This is a commercial from Berlitz Language School, and in this commercial that we're going to watch. It's only about 30, 40 seconds. Um, in this commercial, you're going to see a problem with communication. And I want you to think um, what aspect of the problem is top-down processing and what aspect of the problem is bottom-up processing. Okay, so watch this video and then we'll discuss it after. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. Me, we are sinking. We are sink. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Okay, so you saw a short commercial from Berlitz Language School, uh, which is a famous kind of old language school in Europe. Um, and in that commercial, there was a Coast Guard, a German Coast Guard, who heard a message. And the message was, we are sinking, we are sinking. Now, he kind of misunderstands that. And he replies, what are you thinking about? in a German accent. Okay, so um, you may or may not know, but uh, in German accent, the, the TH has more of a kind of S or Z kind of sound. Okay, so he misinterpreted the, um, the, the S from sinking to be the TH of thinking. Okay, now what aspects of this are the problem with bottom-up processing and top-down processing. Okay, so we could actually say that it's both things had a problem, both things had an issue. Now, in terms of top-down processing, he should have been aware of the context of communication, right? The context of communication means that probably somebody's not contact him, co contacting him asking, what are you thinking? Okay, so that's probably wasn't the, you know, the, the message that was being sent out. So he should have known from the context of communication that uh, he was misunderstanding that message. So that means that he had a problem with top-down processing. Okay, but we could also say that in terms of um, misunderstanding the specific uh, sound or the, uh, you know, the, the specific pronunciation of these letters, um, we could say that that is also an issue. And if we focus on that, then the problem was bottom-up processing, okay? So bottom-up processing would be related to those individual sounds, and top-down processing is related to the, the context of communication and the background knowledge of knowing that this message, you know, was misunderstood. Okay, so I hope that was an interesting example. Okay, I've got one more example here. Actually, I've got a few more examples, but um, let's move on to this one. So I want to share with you a brief story, and I want you to tell me whether it the, the problem, again, was bottom-up processing or top-down processing. Okay, so uh, this is a true story. It's not amazing, but it's a true story. Okay, so I went to a shoe shop. I was walking past a shoe shop um, just near Hanguk University, and they had a big sale, and they had lots of shoes outside that were quite cheap. 
okay so I, I took a look at the shoes and I found some shoes that I liked and I picked them up and I went into the shop and I spoke to the uh, the the server in the shop and I asked Ebek uh, uh, okay in, in Korean and I, I gave him the shoes and I sat down waiting for my my right size shoes to come okay uh, and the 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 shop helper went away and a few minutes later the shop he came back and uh, he said to me uh, in Korean right he said something that I wasn't expecting in Korean now my my Korean is okay you know it's, it's not bad I can have normal conversations in Korean um, but occasionally I get a question or um, Occasionally somebody says something that I really wasn't expecting, okay? Now, if I know the conversation, if it's kind of a, a regular common conversation, I can follow the conversation quite easily. But if I get like a really random question that I didn't expect, then that can really throw me off, okay? So I'm sitting there waiting for my shoes and the server comes to me and he says, okay, in, in Korean really fast. And I didn't quite understood what he said. So I was sitting there, I thought, oh, no. What am I going to do? He's he's waiting for an answer. He's looking at me. I, I have to say something, right? So I looked at him. I thought, well, okay. So he's, he didn't bring the shoes that I expected, right? I expected him to bring the right size shoes. And he wasn't kind of smiling and passing me shoes. So I thought, okay, all right. And in his hand, he was holding the same pair of shoes that I gave him, which were not the right size, okay? So I thought, okay, well, there's something wrong here. So I said, ne? Okay, so kind of, you know, um, kind of encouraging him to ask me again. And again, he went, Z -z 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 -z. but I caught a little bit more of what he said this time. Uh, actually, I, I heard what he said. I just didn't under quite understand it. He said, Z -z 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 Okay, so I knew, okay, so he doesn't have, right? Something, something doesn't have. Now, I heard what he said, but I didn't understand what he said. And because I looked at him, looked at the shoes and thought about the situation, I, I suddenly I was able to translate it. And what he said was, Kungo, pake, opsoyo. Okay, Kungo, pake, opsoyo. Now, for me, as an English speaker, that's a really strange expression if you translate it into English, okay? So, kungo, big one, or big thing. Pake, to me, that means outside, opsoyo, don't have. So, big, outside, don't have, okay? So, I could translate it, but to me, that translation sounds really weird as an English speaker. But then I understood outside of this size okay we don't have we don't have the big size out outside of this size okay it's a really strange translation but by thinking about the situation i was able to decipher that they didn't have the right size and i was able to translate what he said so for processing that did i use bottom up processing or top down processing well of course, the answer is top-down processing. I used the context. I used the clues about the communication and looking at his body language and things like that. So in that case, I used the top-down processing in order to translate what I was listening to. Okay, a few more examples. Okay, here's an interesting one. Um, this is not exactly listening and reading comprehension, but it's a... I think this is an interesting example. So have a look at this kind of diagram here on the slide and um, see if you can tell me how many circles can you see? Okay. And how many triangles can you see? Okay, well, it's difficult to answer this and I often get a lot of different kinds of answers. And to be honest, the answer is that it, it depends on how you are processing these pictures, okay? Now, if you are processing these with top-down processing, then your, your brain or your eyes are kind of filling in the blanks and guessing the missing details. You're looking at the big picture and you're guessing that it's a white triangle 
on top of a triangle that has a black outline and also on top of some circles and the white triangle is covering the black circles okay so that would be top-down processing but if you look at this in terms of bottom-up processing and you look at all of the parts individually you can see that actually there aren't any complete triangles and there aren't any complete circles okay so in terms of bottom-up processing there are no triangles and no circles in this uh, in these diagrams okay so that's just an example of how you can use kind of the overall context clues to fill in the blanks sometimes okay um, but in terms of bottom-up processing you have to look at individual parts okay right well I've got one more example here um, and here's an example of some Korean and I'm going to read this to you in my terrible Korean reading accent. Okay. All right. So listen to this. Migukun chegani sheili hyong myogoro yuan yu seng sangrangi chagukne changcheng rongol chogwa han sangteda. Takuna chegani gukje yuga hagoro sheil opje duri apaki kajungdel kochiranun chon mangi usehan. Sang Hwangida. Okay, right, okay. Apologies for messing most of that up. Okay, so okay, so I can read Korean, right? You can see that I can almost read Korean. Okay. But how much of this do you think that I understood? Okay, I told you before that my my Korean is it's okay for basic conversations, you know, I can, I can get around in life. But this is taken from a newspaper article. And, you know, to be honest, I only understand a few words in here, okay? I, I recognize some of the grammar. I understand some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the particles of grammar. But there's only a few words in here, really, that I understand. You know, a lot of the words are above my, my level. So, the, uh, I understand, you know, one or two percent of this. But how am I reading it then? If I don't understand it, how am I reading it? Well, I'm using completely bottom-up processing, okay? When I'm reading this, I have no top-down knowledge of these words to help me with quick automatic reading, um, which for young learners would be kind of sight words approach, okay? Sight words approach is where you, you look at a word and you read the whole word, you learn the whole word, okay? Um, but for this, I'm using bottom-up processing, which is character by character, okay? Piece by piece, okay? Because I can't look at it as a whole and, you know, look at and easily read these words, okay? So for this one, I have z almost zero top-down processing, and in order to read it, I'm using 100% bottom-up processing, okay? Okay, so you've seen a few examples of uh, bottom-up processing and top-down processing to help you understand. But now let's look at this. Why is awareness of processing important for teachers? Well, students and learners need to use both processes for comprehension. Tasks can be designed to include steps that encourage both types of processing. Okay. So in your lessons, whether you're teaching listening or teaching reading, as a teacher, you should be including steps and questions and activities and materials that encourage sometimes more bottom-up processing, sometimes more top-down processing, okay? Usually these things are happening together, but you can focus more on one than the other, okay? So you want to include steps that include uh, that have a focus on details, kind of piece by piece, step by step comprehension of the the sounds, the words, um, the letters, or the syllables. But you also want to include questions and activities that focus on background knowledge and making connections. Right, connections is one of the reading strategies. So. Um, uh, connecting with yourself, connecting with the world, connecting with other texts, and so on. Okay, so you want to help learners to use the world context, context outside the classroom, context they're aware of, um, and those things in their listening and reading comprehension. Okay, I've got a couple of little examples of this to finish off. 
Okay, so for focus on details and piece by piece comprehension, here is an activity. Um, this activity is to underline the stressed words in the worksheet. Okay, so students would listen to a recording or listen to the teacher and they would listen to which part of the, the word is stressed. Okay, for example, pepper, bananas, pizza, carrots, butter. Okay, so they listen for the stress. Okay, so there's one exa example of a uh, an activity that focuses on um, listening for uh, bottom up stress and pronunciation. You could also do things, you know, with listening for sounds, listening for specific words, and so on. Okay, here's an ex uh, an example of an activity where or a question where you're. Um, looking at more kind of the general context and background knowledge, okay? So we read this story, The Three Little Pigs, and, you know, work with the story a little bit, and once the students understand it, which pig is the smartest and why, okay? Is it the pig who, that uh, built the, the house from straw, or the house from wood, or the house from bricks, okay? Um, so then you could talk, you know, you could talk more about which of the materials is the strongest and so on. And that brings in kind of overall comprehension and also kind of background knowledge of other things that we know. OK, so those are a couple of examples of activities. And when you're planning lessons and when you're using listening and reading materials, think about encouraging top down processing and also think about encouraging bottom-up processing in your teaching. I hope that was useful. Thank you very much.